There's one facet of living in modern society that is often overlooked by citizens young and old alike. Here in America, we make a show every couple of years about how important this is to us. We talk about the importance of democratic elections. We take to calling the act of voting our civic duty. And if we're really dedicated, we even make it to all the polls and cast a ballot for potential leaders we think might make a difference in our country. Here in America, we like to discuss how necessary our form of representative government is. And we have a habit of measuring societal progress in other nations by how democratic their elections are. But for all the tough talk we enjoy about federal politics, Americans often neglect their state of elections, not really caring who represents their home state on a national level, caring about as little who their governor is, and in most cases, caring very little about their state-level representation. Under this massive stack of political hierarchy, though, there's one group who, ironically, has a good deal of control over the daily lives of Americans, yet which gets even less attention. Local politicians. The low level of voter turnout at elections is taken as something of a given, with no outlets ever reporting with surprise when the number of potential voters is quintuple the actual number of active voters on a municipal or county level. While America's and Japan's electoral systems are certainly different from one another, this setup is something shared between American audiences and the filmmakers behind the 2015 film Neat Election. This project, a tale of an up-and-comer who runs in a city election as a neat, one who is not in employment, education, or training, explores the absurd world we live in through the lens of local politics and being a societal outcast. The film, which we'll go ahead and say we highly recommend, is available right now on Prime Video, and should be checked out by anyone looking for a wholesome, quirky, hilarious story that is sure to ring true for any youthful folks who find themselves directionless or wanting more out of society. Go give the film a look if you have the time, as it's well worth the two and a half hour runtime. Today we'll be discussing the background of the film, a success story in itself, as well as the implications behind the film's themes and messaging. The production of Neat Election was kicked off by Kiminari Suzuki in December 2013. After doing our research on the film, we reached out to Suzuki, who was kind enough to answer some of our burning questions concerning the film and his life. A big thank you goes out to him both for his work on the project and for being willing to speak with us. Suzuki revealed to us that the events of NEAT election were based upon his own experiences as a NEAT running for local election. As he said, the film is half true and half fiction. We also came across information that the secondary characters of the film were inspired by other NEATs he met during his time working on the film. Suzuki's own electoral experience occurred in Fukushima, where he lived before becoming a Niigata transplant following the Great Tohoku Earthquake of 2011. His story was one of a neat with no money who was able to overcome what he describes as the negative image of neatdom to gain local office in Fukushima. Given that Niigata was Suzuki's adopted home, he moved the film's setting to match placing the events in Niigata rather than Fukushima, wanting to help invigorate the youth towards participation in local politics, and with April 2015 being the next scheduled election in Niigata, Suzuki went to work on today's film. He chose the medium of film because, as Suzuki explained to us, he's a lover of cinema, citing in particular the works of Frank Capra, like It's a Wonderful Life and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, as well as Akira Kurosawa, with Ikiru and Seven Samurai. Films like these affected Suzuki, and perhaps he sought to affect others in a similar manner. However, given his lack of experience in the field of film, no one within the film production scene of Niigata immediately jumped to help with neat election. Undeterred, Suzuki instead moved to the internet to find people, as well as neats who could help with the project. In truth, this was Suzuki's first time writing, directing, raising money, and finding a production house. When he took his search online, Suzuki encountered Hikaru Okita, a director with a few projects to his name and who has continued to work in film today. 
Okita joined the project as co-director and editor, with Suzuki continuing to fill the bulk of the other creative roles of the production. Suzuki explained that he made the film on a budget of about 3 million yen, a cost which he describes as adequate for a 30 to 60 minute production. He posted to a film production board asking for assistance using this small budget to produce a 90 to 120 minute project, and Okita was the only person to respond. Matters weren't all smooth, however, as the film's crowdfunding campaign did not meet its goal. However, with a good amount of hype built online and in a popular audition magazine, the star of the film, Kento Kasahara, was found. With a shoestring budget, Suzuki and Okita took what was intended to be 90 minutes and drew it out to a two and one half hour production. This was something of a tightrope production, being shot over only eight days without much room for error. Suzuki commented that more or less everyone appearing in the film was an amateur, with some neats appearing as extras and that the cast and crew worked together on a strict shooting schedule to pull the project together. Thanks to this hard work and cooperation, Suzuki says he now finds it his responsibility to do his best in promoting the film. Finally, the film was completed in early October 2014. Okita took to editing the project while Suzuki sought distribution partners. In total, Suzuki solicited 70 companies, all of whom refused or ignored these requests. Sporting the same ingenuity as before, Suzuki decided to have the group go it alone. In turn, they resolved to broadcast the film for free on Nico Nico Live Broadcasting, with the premiere set for February 10th, 2015. On that day, more than 34,000 viewers tuned in, and 83% showed their approval through a post-viewing survey. After this initial digital screening, small shows were held all over Japan. It's been noted that in the April 2015 elections, specifically the race for the Chiba City Council, at least one neat was involved. Though this person did not win a seat, and though it remains unconfirmed whether they were influenced by the movie, the coincidence is notable regardless. Neat election didn't stop here, however. It went on to win skill and acting awards at the first Kashikojima Film Festival, held on September 6, 2015. More recently, it was added to Prime Video with English subtitles, making it available globally. The events of Suzuki's life didn't slow down either. Though this is the only film to his name as of 2020, Suzuki has continued to remain politically active. Suzuki has also been consistently active on his blog, discussing political issues as well as artistic endeavors. Jumping back to 2015, let's take a look at Neat Election before delving into what the film says about neatdom and the world at large. The film centers around a young man named Chihiro Inagaki, a man who grew up, attended university, graduated, and only worked for a short while before dropping out of his corporate job. As Chihiro explains, he couldn't stand being a cog in a machine. After quitting, Chihiro tried his hand at acting in Tokyo, yet couldn't find success here either. Returning home to live with his parents and sister in Niigata, Chihiro becomes a neat, though not by choice. He applies for 100 different jobs, at large firms, small firms, and even a ramen shop, but is rejected by all due to the recession. The ramen shop owner comments on how the recession has made things tough, given that a university grad is applying at his ramen stand. Shihiro goes as far as seeking work placement through a local center for neats and hikikomori, though that doesn't work either. Over time, Shihiro makes friends with a group of other neats at a halfway house, and they all try to improve the town together. Shihiro becomes scared when he learns that a favorite childhood candy shop might be closing. As it turns out, the recession and online shopping have impacted the local business mall, hitting every shop there pretty hard. Shihiro reflects on the happiness this place brought in his childhood, and resolves to save the entire mall. With his group of neat friends, Shihiro helps to form a flash mob for the sake of viral advertising. The mall owner tries to host an idol contest as well. When these small pushes don't show big returns, Shihiro and the other neats settle on having Shihiro run for local assembly so that they can affect change for the sake of the mall and all neats in the area, from the inside of the system. Neat 
neat election deals largely with the separation between media narrative and reality when it comes to neats. As we see, the news, Chihiro's parents, and many locals all demonize Neats as shiftless drains on society. In truth, meanwhile, Chihiro and his friends want to help society, but are barred entry from either charity or employment. In truth, Chihiro is a square peg that won't fit into the round hole set for him by society. This is shown not to be a personal problem being implied to extend to all Neats. The other residents of the halfway house also don't have places in this society. In fact, Chihiro's main drive to pursue politics is to help create a place for them and people like them in the world. Similarly, Suzuki explained to us that a house like this existed in Niigata at the same time of the film's conception, which served as inspiration for the inclusion of this expanded group. At the home, there's Yumi, a former maid cafe attendant who was let go due to her hitting 30, Riki, a musician without a record deal, Mr. K, an aspiring pro wrestler without a contract, Shinosuke, the descendant of a samurai who dresses and acts like one, and Kamimura, the manager of the house, himself a former professor who was bullied out of work by his students. In spite of the rejection each of these individuals experiences at the hands of the collective, they're shown to be happy, thanks to having friends and community. A friend of Riki's even knows about Shihiro during his campaign, given that Riki and he have talked about Shihiro. Their bond is so strong that, though the whole group agrees that Shihiro will likely lose his campaign for assemblyman when he first tells them, they all agree to support him. They argue that this will be a positive experience for Shihiro and the group, so they ought to help him. When contrasted with the reactions of his parents and sister, we see that most of the rest of society sees Shihiro's neatdom and political campaign as nuisances. This all works out because, in his heart, Chihiro is trying to change the world for the better. It's not for personal gain or out of selfishness, either. In fact, the campaign comes as a natural progression, as Chihiro's desire to change Niigata doesn't begin with his political aspirations. This only comes about when he is encouraged by a former mayor to run after he applies for a small business loan and is rejected by the city. The original idea was for Chihiro and company to open up a shop at the local mall. This shop is intended as a comfortable artist's space for Neats to hone their skills, and which would create a place for them in a society which has more or less shut them out. When presenting this plan, Chihiro is laughed out of the loan office because his lack of a job and lack of business experience. After this poor showing, Chihiro decides to try and change the rules to help people like him advance. He must become a part of the system in order to fix it. After a rough first day on the campaign trail, the previously mentioned friend of Riki's urges Chihiro to keep campaigning. He comments that he's been out on the street playing his guitar and singing for two hours. Chihiro is the only audience who has come to hear him, yet this alone makes it worth the effort. Thus, the friend imparts Shihiro with this message, encouraging him to continue working towards his dreams. At the same time, Shihiro must contend with a smear campaign, which alleges he's only pursuing politics for the sake of money. Even the halfway house residents buy into this narrative and drop Shihiro for a short while. In spite of these setbacks, Shihiro goes about interviewing all 25,000 residents living in his district, over the course of about six months. This demonstrates his desire to change things for the better. Shihiro wants to learn what everyone living here actually wants, rather than presuming to speak for them as his rival legacy candidate seems to. Shihiro must also contend with opposition from the older generation living in the area. As we mentioned, the house's flash mob garners a solid number of views online, Yet, the owner of the mall is upset by how the kids presume to cramp his style while fixing up his mall. Chihiro's parents and the older generation at large all look down on Chihiro and company trying to change the world, seeing them as not only lazy but presumptive. It's only once Chihiro builds rapport with the community, and once he hears out what everyone wants, that the tide starts to change. He's not trying to change things just from his own perspective, instead wanting to respect everyone in his potential constituency. 
The former mayor and current nursing home resident encourages Chihiro to represent all groups in his district, not just the NEETS, a lesson he takes to heart early on. This older man sees the potential in Chihiro and knows this type of young person is what politics needs. This is perhaps a bit of Suzuki himself taking on both roles. In our conversation, Suzuki explained that he was born into what is known as the Employment Ice Age, a period roughly corresponding with Japan's lost 20 years. In this period, temporary gig work and unstable short-term jobs became the norm, leaving many Gen Xers with a sense of malaise, where their parents and grandparents could have survived with one career for their entire lives. Those in the Employment Ice Age came up in a world which promised them this stability, then forced them to constantly scramble to make ends meet. Suzuki explains that some college graduates in the 90s and 2000s would pretend to not have degrees, so that they wouldn't appear overqualified for low-paying service work. In turn, the constant struggle for work led many to simply stay home and become neats. This led Suzuki to the conclusion that the government needed to step in and assist those who were out of luck. In turn, Suzuki ran for office and made the film on display today, both being the older politician who sees the potential in Shihiro and embodying Shihiro, the energetic neat who wants to change the world. Those born into the employment ice age are now growing into their 40s and 50s, and yet continue to live off their parents' pensions in some cases. Suzuki expresses concern for their well-being once their parents pass away, imploring that considerations be made as to how these people could contribute to Japan and make a living wage in doing so. While explaining this, Suzuki stated that he hopes himself and the work he produces, such as Neat Election, will be a message to society. As he said to us, quote, Life only happens once. Rather than staying shut up at home, please take some action. End quote. Since wrapping on Neat Election, Kiminari Suzuki has continued his storied career, though largely away from the silver screen. In 2018, he released the book Hinansha Rhapsody, which is based upon the interpersonal struggles waged between refugees of the Fukushima crisis in 2011. Having observed the fallout of this incident, Suzuki told us that the book is meant to be an almost true version of events, with some fictionalization being applied. As he put it, Quote, Many writers have written books saying that the country is bad and that the refugees are pitiable. However, in actuality, there were also conflicts between the evacuees. End quote. In conversation, Suzuki went on to compare the novel to Les Mis in terms of its feeling. Two years later, Suzuki attempted to run for governor of Tokyo in the 2020 election. Unfortunately, the crowdfunding for his campaign came up short and he missed the 3 million yen mark required of potential candidates. This hasn't deterred Suzuki though, who says that if the opportunity for further election arises, he would like to try again. As he told us, he believes it is important to hear out the voices and problems of one's constituents. He sees most politicians as rejecting this and instead promoting their own image. Suzuki also explained to us that he would like to make more films in the future, but that budgetary concerns have kept him from directly pursuing this given his independent status. Over the years, he says that he's followed various pursuits, such as filmmaking and writing, but that none of them has become his number one, though he always attempts new endeavors with the aim of finding a number one, as he puts it. Looking to the future, Suzuki says he thinks it might be fun to get married and help a child pursue their own dreams. Unfortunately, he explains that a bride has yet to be found. Overall, Neat Election is a largely apolitical film all about politics. It's less concerned with specific policies and more interested in how a young upstart can feel comfortable breaking into the political sphere. Because it doesn't bog itself down with picking a side of the fence on specific issues, the film ends up being wholesome as f which is the main draw here. Seriously, Neat Election is super feel-good. Even the conflicts within the narrative get resolved in a cozy manner. The plot is told from an outsider's perspective, so it's not dark and gloomy, nor jaded and cynical. It's hopeful. Plus, the events happen on such a minor scale that it seems both achievable for your average young adult viewer, yet like a major step for Chihiro and company. In other words, Neat Election gives you someone to root for who you feel as though you could also be.
Be sure to check out Neat Election, as it deserves all the love it can get. It's an ambitious, small-scale project born from a first-time director and a respectable filmmaker teaming up to make a project for the sake of encouraging political action among youth. It's certainly worth your time, and it's a film worth voting for.